Isn't the Lord good? Yes. Come on. Come on. I'm in just a moment. I'm going to ask Pastor Megan to come and do tithes and offerings. But I want to pray over you and let you know, even though we're transitioning to another part of the service, we're not leaving this. The Lord is going to work in your life this morning. There's going to be healing. There's going to be a demonstration of the Spirit today. Yes, Lord. Kind and gracious Father, Holy One, Anointed One, Alpha and Omega, both Lion and Lamb, the one that plundered the underworld and embarrassed the devil and set the captives free. That Jesus, we worship you this morning, Lord. We give you ourselves this morning. In this corporate gathering, Lord God, we ask that there be a release of your fragrance, a release of heaven over our lives, Lord God, that you would mark us in this moment, that you would speak to us, Lord God, that you would bring healing to our bodies, Lord, that you would restore families, that you would restore marriages in this moment, Lord, in this position of worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you come and, 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 and literally habit, you inhabit our praise. You live here. So, Lord, we welcome you and we ask you not to leave. Keep our hearts open, open to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. So, um, as worship was going on, Rose not here today. Um, no, trust me. I don't think you can wear out Rowan. Um, he is, he's the area pastor for our region here. So he's at Marysville Church this morning preaching for them. So keep him in your prayers. Um, and so this falls on me today. And um, the computer crashed back there and uh, I'm just like oh my gosh Blaine please go up <laughs> and um, and again it just amazes me how he enjoys this how he um, loves to come up here and talk and uh, encourage people and stuff like that so today I honor him um, God bless him wherever he is and I miss him tremendously right now um, so please keep, in it, keep him in your prayers uh, as he speaks. He so desires to 
equip people and make sure that they're going in the right way and it weighs on him. This is a challenging time to pastor people because there is so much going on in the world, going on in the world, going on in the church, going on in your home, going on in life. There's so much going on and there's so many voices that speaks to everybody. And to be able to pick out of the voices, that's the one to listen to. Um, and I think that's what he tries to do every week is this is the voice. Like the Bible says, this is the way, walk in this way. Um, so uh, again, like I honor him and um, wish he was here, but I'm glad where he is. Uh, so a couple of announcements. Um, every Friday this month, we are going, we have prayer here from 7 to 11 p.m. You don't have to come for the whole time. You can come for half an hour. You can come for five minutes, those of you who pray for five minutes. But, um, come for however you like and just come in the presence of God and just um, join us in prayer. We pray for our city. We pray for the county, the region. We pray for each other, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, it's been a challenging time and um, some people aren't okay with coming out yet and um, just praying. And one of the songs, it has like, you know, I will not fear. And um, I'm thinking as the computer's crashing, the times that we say don't fear is when there is definitely fear there. It's like in the midst of the fear, God tells us don't fear. Um, and he wants us to switch our focus from what there is to be afraid to who he is and what his promises are and what he wants us to do. So um, back there, it's like, don't fear, Meg, it's going to be okay. Just shut everything down, restart. And in life, when it gets overwhelming, tell yourself, don't fear. It's good to talk to yourself. Tell yourself, don't fear. And then think about what God says and his promise and um, allow him to minister or encourage you or switch your focus. Take your mind off that and put it on him who is so much greater and um, just a better thing to focus on is him. Um, so prayer, come, come for an hour, come for whatever time and uh, just pray with us um, for the days of, ahead, for what's going on in your life. Um, I think a call to prayer encourages people to pray because you may go through your day and not really pray. You talk to God, but you don't really take that time aside and pray. So this is a chance for you to come together and pray. And so I encourage you to do that, um, to join us for prayer. Um, all right, let's do our offering. We have so many ways to give now, um, which is... For years, the young people are like, text to give, give online. So we do have that now. So um, you can give online, you can give at the website, you can text to give, and the um, information should be on the screen. But in our giving, like for me now, giving tithes, returning the tithe back to God is, um, is a way of life. It's no longer a, oh my gosh, 10%. It is, oh, this belongs to God. I get to keep everything else, but this goes to God. So people who are struggling with tithe, um, I think as your relationship grows in Christ and you trust him more, you will return the tithe back to him. So I encourage you to do that and also to give your offering, sow seeds. Um, TGP, I found, is good ground to sow into. And when you sow your seed, um, don't just throw it in the ground. Um, plant a seed, sow a seed, pray over the seed, which we're going to do. Um, thank God for blessing you that you have something to give because a lot of people don't. And um, it's, it's good when we thank him and just like, I know he's God. Um, but he likes us to thank him and let, us, let him know that we appreciate him. So if you have your offering, get your offering ready. There are envelopes in the back. When you get your um, worship guide, there's envelopes in there as well. First-time visitors, 
Uh, there's connect cards in there that um, Ro would love to connect with you. Notice I say Ro would like to connect with you. Rowan would like to connect with you and just, again, encourage you. So fill that out. And um, yeah, let's go to Father in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here this morning. We thank you, Lord, that um, whenever we come to you, Father, you are there and you meet us there. Never have we come and um, expected your presence and you not be there. Never have we come uh, looking for you, God, and not find you. Uh, I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord God, for bringing us together here and online. Um, I pray, Father, that your presence will continue to fill our homes, fill our lives, fill this place. As we give our offering, as we return the tithe to you, Lord, as we give our offerings and we sow seeds, we thank you, Lord, that you give uh, seed to the sower. We thank you for your provision um, in ways that we didn't even think possible you've provided. We haven't gone hungry. We aren't homeless, Lord God. We thank you for that, Father. And so as we give our offering, Lord, we pray a hundredfold return. We bless the offering. We bless those who give, and we bless those who have a desire to give. Father, I pray, God, that you would bless them that they can bring into your house, Lord Jesus. You tell us when we return the tithe to you that we can test you, Lord, and see if you will not back the devourer in our lives, Lord. So as we give of our tithes and our offerings, Lord, we just uh, back the devourer in our lives, things that will break down and uh, cause our, us to have to use money to do something that um, isn't intended for that, Lord Jesus, that will come and just want to steal our money and steal our peace. And you said in your word that you would back that devourer. And so we declare that today in Jesus' name, and we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. So you can put your offering in the back. Um, and uh, Blaine's going to be speaking today. And I'm so thankful for that. And the reason why I'm thankful is because if it wasn't Blaine, then it would have to be me. And so I was so happy when he's like, because it is the second Sunday. So the youth are supposed to have their class, but they're going to stay in here. So when he said yes, I was like, whoo, a big exhale. So I'm so thankful for that. Uh, but before he comes, um, Pastor Teresa is here. And she was supposed to go to the Dream Center um, this week, leaving tomorrow. And um, we prayed for her last week. And um, in contacting the Dream Center on Monday, they are still not doing, they decided not to do their Dream Center stuff because of COVID. So they got, um, they pushed it back. They were saying maybe November. And so we're just going to postpone it till next year um, because it's something that she's prayed for and um, asked God for, and he's opened the door. I don't think that it should be something that's shortchanged. I don't think that's the Lord. So waiting till next year, because COVID will be over. Amen. <laughs> Amen. COVID will be over, and they'll be back doing their street missions and stuff that she desires to see and learn from. So um, we're thankful that she didn't get down there, and then they'd be like, oh, we're glad you're here, but we're not doing blah, blah, blah. So we're thankful that God um, worked it out, that we could postpone it till next year. So um, just keep her in prayer, because like you know, the expectation and then the non-expectation, but we thank God that um, it's not a no, it's soon, right? Amen. It's not a no, it's soon. And, okay, it's not a no, it's soon. And so uh, we give him thanks. So Blaine, this is my son. I have a boy. This is my son, and I'm so thankful, um, so thankful. You've taken a lot today, and so he has a word. I know he has a word, and I love to hear him speak, so 
um, prepare your hearts. Your hearts should be prepared because worship was awesome. Prepare to uh, receive the word of God today. Amen. All right. Thank you. I couldn't ask for better in-laws. I mean, come on. I didn't grow up in like a, a, a Christian environment, so to say. So sometimes you heard some crazy stuff about in-laws, right? Uh, but I love Pastor Ro and Megan, and they have done so much for Daniela and I, and um, they're a blessing. So um, this morning, if you want to go ahead and turn your Bibles and get ready, uh, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. But I want to just uh, talk to you for a minute. Is that all right? All right? Um, man, I have been gripped lately. I, I have been possessed with the Holy Spirit to a new level lately. Yes, come on. I, I have been drunk on a wine that the flesh doesn't know of. Come on. It has been crazy. I decided... I said, Lord, what do I teach to these teens? Like, then we, you put this youth rally on my heart, and we were going to have that. And then we get there, and I'm like, oh, boy, <laughs> we're actually doing it, right? And, and um, what, what do you want to preach about? And he told me, me. And, <laughs> and I've been preaching the gospel and Jesus for the past, I don't know how many months. Um, we had our youth leader, Ashley. Uh, we love Ashley. She spoke last Wednesday, and you know what she spoke on? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> And it was great. Um, it, we, we have literally had the spirit hovering um, in the youth room. It, it's amazing what happens when you preach about Jesus and you don't change the dial. When, when you don't change the dial. Um, you, you know, in this, I'm going to get to this, I promise. My title this morning is Jesus the More. Jesus the more. I want to let you know this morning, and I tell my teens, I don't know how long I'm going to be your youth pastor. Could be another week, could be another five years, I don't know. But remember this your whole life, there is more. Amen. There is more. I want you to remember when God takes you and you're, you're walking in your calling and you're speaking to the nations and all these different things and you're changing your workplace and you're a, you're a, you're a kingdom entrepreneur. I want you to remember that your youth pastor told you prophetically, there is more. There is more. And so today, Jesus, there is more, the more. I'm sorry, Jesus, the more. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 2 Verses 2 through 5 says this, and this is my life verse. This is my ministry verse. I said, you know, all these, all these uh, ministries have these fancy themes and verses, and I'm like, Lord, I have no idea what to put as, as Daniela and I said. He led me to here, and it's this. Ready? And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Verse 5, get this, this is for us, that your faith, that Blaine's faith, that Miss Joe's faith, that Daniela's faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God but in the power of God. The hour in which we are living in, we have to live and move by the power of God. By the power of God. Jesus the more. And so I, I've been just ministering Jesus. And it's amazing when you think, well, I preach the gospel. What do I preach on next? And you preach the gospel again. It's a never-ending series. It's, it's a never-ending series. And Daniela, when she sings, she goes, oh, babe, what song should we do? And, and one time we talked and we prayed and we said whatever on, is on the Lord's heart. Do you know there are songs that although they are good, they may not minister to the heart of God in that moment. That's why sometimes you come to worship and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't want to move the wrong way. I, I, I feel as if I'm mouth to mouth with the Lord. It's because it's ministering to his heart. It's because somebody yielded and said, hold up, I'm not singing that song. I'm singing this song. There are messages that although they are good, they're not God. 
And, and in this hour, we have to determine good from God. Come on. Come on. Listen, I, uh, maybe it was a year, two years ago, I went through a backslidden moment in my faith. And, and, and I was seeking the scriptures, and I was looking, and I said, Lord, you have to speak to me. Well, did you call me to preach? I don't feel like you did. And, and he led me to a lot of scriptures, and, and I've, I've already shared those. But, but one was, he, he led me to the, um, didn't we do all of this in your name? And he said, I just didn't know you. And then something he's put on my heart is the seven churches in Revelation. Oh, and, and, and the faithful, or, or, I'm sorry, the dead church was the church that looked alive. It was the church down the street where you're like, man, everybody goes there. Everybody. And I'm not saying that church is bad. I'm saying the scriptures say there are churches that look alive. That there are every activity under the sun. They have every form of discipleship, even though there's only one. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to move on. I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, and, 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 but, but he said, listen, you just, even though you were busy, you were dead because it wasn't about me. Listen, and in this hour, I know there's COVID. I know there's fear. I know there's an election. I know, I know, trust me, you can't listen to anything or watch anything without learning about this stuff. But the topic doesn't change. It's Jesus. Jesus Christ. Not the gardener Jesus. <laughs> Not Jesus. Jesus Christ is the topic. Now, you hear what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's about Jesus. He is the more. He is everything we need. He is the answer to every question. He, he, is, he is scripture in the su substance of the scripture. He is scripture's means. He is scripture's end. He is, he is alpha and omega. He is lion and lamb. He is all in all. And we can't change the topic. He is the topic. We can't change it. And in this hour, we have, we have to, we have to preach about Jesus. We have to have a move of the Lord. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. I, wanna, I want you to understand this. Paul, um, he is writing this letter, and he says, while I was amongst you, I determined not to know anything. Now, I want to understand, help you understand why this is so important. He said, I determined to know nothing. You know what nothing means in the Greek? Nothing. <laughs> It means nothing. He, he said, I determined to know nothing but. And why is that significant? It's significant because in Acts, uh, or I'm sorry, not Acts. It's, uh, where is it? It's in one of the scriptures where we learn, it's Acts 22 verse 3, that Paul says he was literally, he said he was educated in the law. He was underneath a strict teaching of our fathers, is what he said. He said he lived in zeal for God. So in other words, he was a Bible scholar of the Old Testament, the Torah, the law. He knew everything about the feast. He was educated in the law. But he said, listen, this Jesus wrecked me. And so if I'm going to come to you and you're going to encounter God, I have to forget everything I knew and be consumed with one topic. I have to be possessed with one spirit. I have to drink a wine that only comes from the blood of Jesus. I have to do away with the old wineskin because Jesus is giving me new wine. And you can't put new wine in an old wineskin. Come on, this is good. And if we're going to be consumed with Jesus, we have to forget things. Listen, I come from a denomination um, where we learn great things about holiness. And it, it's phenomenal. I saw my notes. But they don't own holiness. And can I talk to you charismatics? You don't own the Holy Spirit. Pentecostals, you, 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 you aren't the day of Pentecost. He said, I am determined to know nothing. Nothing means nothing. Listen, I am not, I, I, I'm not going to be consumed and try to define Jesus and try to, and try to consume you and, and, I'm sorry, to persuade you with fancy speaking and all this stuff. I know one thing, and it's Jesus. Jesus, I, I don't have to say I'm Pentecostal. Jesus is Pentecost. So when I'm with one topic, I'm speaking Pentecostal language. If I'm consumed with Jesus, I preach holiness because he's the topic. None is holy but him. And charismatic, like, I got sucked into that for a while. I was like, man, I want to I dance during service. I'm not saying dancing's bad. 
I'm saying I had to learn he is the charisma. He's the gifts. He is charismatic. And so in this hour, listen, I believe that we are seeing the last days. I can prove it to you. <laughs> and I don't have a big fancy forum. Here, here, here's how I can prove it to you. If Paul, or I'm sorry, excuse me, if Peter said in the time of Pentecost, the, the outpouring of the Spirit, the clothing of the Spirit, these are the last days, and we're 2,000 years later, we're the last of the last days. And in those years, we still have one topic. It's Jesus. It never expires. And so um, Paul, he, he, he had this education, but he's saying, you are to know one thing. One thing. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4, get this. this I, I, I really hope, um, I, I'm telling you, I'm getting kind of, I told Ro, I said, listen, I won't get too carried away like I do in youth. Somebody, if somebody moves around and acts up, I'm like, hey, quit acting up. Sit down. We're in the presence. I told him I wouldn't do that. So I, I'm not going to, but, but I'm getting, I, I'm just gripped with this thing, man. I can't play around. I don't have any, t I, I'm afraid to, I'm, I'm afraid to, to be, uh, to just waste an hour. I'm afraid to waste any more time. I, I, I can't go on watching my friend be like, boy, how am I going to talk to him? He's a little scary. It's easy to minister to some people, but to him. No, I've got I've to let this thing out. Like, I, I don't know how much time we have, and people need Jesus. And so, so I'm going to do my best to behave. But, but Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, get, oh, I, I just want to minister this before we get into the meat. Um, Jesus, has, he's been raised from the grave. He's been raised from the dead. And he's talking to the disciples. Get this. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I'm going to jump down to verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they, being the disciples, asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Why do I say that? Well, because we have an election coming up in November. <laughs> And the disciples were talking political. They said, Jesus, when are you going to restore the kingdom? And he was talking power. He was talking kingdom. Sometimes we get so consumed with politics. Now, I'm not saying don't vote. That's not what I'm saying. But we get consumed with politics that we then say, I'm a Christian because I'm Republican. That's ridiculous. I'm Christian because I'm a Democrat. That's ridiculous. He, the, the disciples said, Jesus, we know all the miracles. We know all of this. But when are you going to restore the kingdom? And he's like, what? You will receive power when the Spirit comes on you. And be witnesses. Oh, what is a witness? It's this. A witness is a Greek word for, uh, we know it as a martyr. You say it in the Greek as martos. And it's this. It's that their life, a martyr, is one that has a life of evidence that is evidence of Jesus undergoing a violent death. Now, I want to propose this to you. Death can mean, and we know biblically, there is a special place in the kingdom of heaven for the martyrs, the ones that lost their life for the gospel. But I would also like to propose that this could also mean those that let the flesh die. Those that, my life is evidence of Jesus because the flesh was, it wasn't just killed. It had a violent death on a cross. Come on. It's hard for something dead to still sin. It's, it's hard to say I'm still, I'm stuck because that thing should have died. And while I'm not beating up on you, I'm telling you there is freedom available in Jesus. He can take that thing and let it be crucified on the cross with him. And then you can then be witnesses in all of these areas, but then all of the earth. That includes us. And, and listen, when you are consumed with the Holy Spirit, when you are walking in the Spirit, when you are living for Jesus, your vote will line up with the kingdom because it's, it's, a, it's your life. And I don't walk by faith and say, hold up, Jesus, you stay right here. I'm going to go vote. Hold, hold up, Jesus, I got to go to this nightclub. So you just, you just sing right here. I'll go with you to church in the morning. No, no. He's saying, listen, I am, I, my life is yours because the flesh died. And the flesh and the spirit, they're polar opposites. They just can't exist together. The Lord is not a, what is it, like a schizophrenia? Is that like, that's not the Lord. 
He, he is he, bipolar. Thanks, Miss Jill. She's a little, she's more spiritual than I am. She's got it. Uh, listen, he's, he's saying the flesh, it has to have this violent death. So then when I vote, I'm saying I believe in the power of God. So I'm going to vote based on the kingdom. And then guess what? It, revival doesn't, you can't say, well, if Donald Trump gets in or Joe Biden gets in, revival will happen in America. That's a lie from the pit of hell. They don't have the keys to revival. <laughs> Listen, Daniel shook three kings that didn't have the kingdom values he did. The three Hebrew boys shook a nation by not bowing. They were possessed with one spirit and one topic, and it was Jesus. It was the kingdom. That's what they lived by. So they said, I'm going to vote, but no matter the outcome, Jesus is the one who can shake nations. When I have one topic, I, I can literally, I, I, it doesn't matter who's in office, God hears my prayers. God intercedes on my behalf. All I know among you is Christ and him crucified. Christ and him crucified. It is about Jesus. You want to know what the message of revival is not? It's not revival. When revival hits America, it'll be about Jesus. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be, people will find the gospel. It's that easy. People, people aren't going to say, man, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to this church. I've never been saved, never went to a church, and they're teaching about theology. No, the, the message of revival, people are going to say, I once was blind, but now I see. <laughs> Come on, that's the greatest testimony in all of Scripture to me, is I once was blind, but now I see. It's about Jesus. So no matter what happens in November, we have one topic. We can still pray. I'm encouraging you to still pray. I'm still encouraging you to do that. But, but don't change the topic. Don't change the dial. It is about Jesus. So he, he knows nothing but Christ and him crucified. Uh, look at this in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, it says, I was with you in much fear and trembling. You remember that scripture in the New Testament when the disciples, they were all like fear struck them because the Lord was moving. And, and there are signs, miracles, and wonders. Friday night we were in prayer. Let me get my water. We were in prayer Friday night and I told uh, Miss Vicki we were praying and Danny and Marie we were here. And we were praying. It was later. We were almost done. And I said, you know, I long for the days that the cloud fills the temple. Amen. That the cloud... That the cloud fills the temple, listen to this, and that we are all, we walk in the fear of the Lord, and when we come in here, we are in trembling because we're like, what's he going to do? What's, what's he going to do? Somebody's going to get saved. Somebody's going to get set free. We, 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 we come into this expectation that the cloud is here. We come in, and the cloud is here, and, and we minister to the cloud because the cloud is Jesus. I long for the days that church, we don't have an agenda. That, that I, I, want to, I want to see a day when I can't preach. Because I'm like, I, I'm not going to mess with this. We're in worship. We're singing unto the Lord. You know the Welsh revival happened due to singing. And, and, and I love, I was listening to a podcast. and The guy was uh, reading old documents of the, the Welsh revival. And he said, man, the meeting would start at 7 and it'd be like 2 a.m. And he's like, oh, thankfully we're done. And when one person would quit, another person would stand up and start singing a psalm or, or singing a song unto the Lord or reading scripture. And, and, and so um, I, I know that we are entering a day when Jesus is the topic that signs, miracles, and wonders will be the way of life. I, I, I minister to a group of people and they're so afraid of, and, and, and they're so, uh, this, this idea of the spirit moving is so foreign and, and they don't know what to think about it. And, and it's really because Jesus hasn't been the topic. When he's the topic, I don't have to come up to you and say, you know, the prophet Blaine is coming to speak to you. Or healing evangelist Abigail is coming and going to pray for you. It's, it's not about the title. It's about Jesus. And when he comes, when he comes, it, it, it signs, miracles, and wonders will be a way of life. When he's the topic. There will be much fear and trembling. Listen to this. Some of the translations for fear is reverence for one's husband. Reverence for one's husband. Man, we have to become the wife 
that we, 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 we are in awe of the, bride, of the bridegroom. Of the bridegroom. We, we are one with the Lord. We're to be married to him. You know, I think about that. And I think about Daniela and I. We just got married. And she, yeah, <laughs> amen. She is, uh, she is the best wife I could ever ask for. I mean, she puts up with me, takes care of me, and, and uh, does all of this stuff, you know. And, and so I think about Daniela and I, and <laughs> when I was ministering to the, at the youth rally, I said, Daniela and I being in covenant should be a mere reflection of my covenant with the Lord and Daniela's covenant with the Lord. I didn't grow up seeing a healthy marriage, and I said, Lord, you know, I chased Daniela, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get her. Oh, she's going to go out with me. I know it. I can feel it. I know she said, get away from me, but did she mean it? <laughs> no, she didn't mean it. And then you got Corey. He's like, yeah, she did. And I'm like, so, but, but, but I think about that, and, and, and Daniela and I, when we, I said, Lord, how am I going to, you know, okay, she, she said yes to the date, and we started dating, and and I proposed to her, and I'm like, Lord, how am I going to know how to be a husband? And he said, let me be the topic, and I'll show you how to be a husband. Okay, I'm done. I'm done asking questions. Okay, you're the topic. You're not the center of our marriage. You are the marriage. You're not just at the center. You're all the way around us. You are the marriage, Lord. And I'm thinking about this. I'm bringing this up because if I don't think, <laughs> I know, I wouldn't be okay with Daniela saying, Oh, Blaine, it's no big deal. I'm just going for a walk in the park with this other guy. I would be like, hold up, what? <laughs> I know you're not. Like, you're, where's the camera crew? You're trying to, you're, you're trying to punk me, you know. But, but like, we're, why, why do we treat the Lord like that? We fall for lesser lovers. When we change the topic, we fall for lesser lovers. Are you, am I boring you? Okay, we're talk, we got to talk about Jesus. And so fear and trembling, um, okay, demonstration in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, it says, uh, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, demonstration. How many of you know the name Catherine Coleman? Yeah, yeah she's my hero. And Catherine Coleman, I'm reading her book, and she said this. Like all other miracles, it defies description and defies definition, but oh, so peaceful. And if you've heard her preaching, I can just hear her like, but oh, so peaceful <laughs> and oh, so wonderful. And who needs a definition when they have an experience? Only the skeptics, but there are no skeptics left after God touches just amazed believers. Do you think the gospel has lost its impact because we've changed the topic? Jesus is a name that we have put to the side and we preach sermon series and we sing the latest and greatest songs. I, I asked Danny, I said, would Richie, I've heard Richie do it before, but he sing nothing but the blood. And she goes, oh yeah, just I'll text him. I said, I'm afraid I'm studying church history and I know there's some religious things that maybe should have went, but I'm afraid we threw out so many good things in the name of it being religious Come on, we have thrown out the respect and the reverence of God and said, that's religious. We sing too long. He preached about hell. Oh my gosh, that's who is he to judge me? We, we have thrown stuff out in the name of religion. And the, when we change the topic, there is no demonstration. And when there's no demonstration, skeptics say, they're a joke. They're a joke. I thought, what I read, I love, I think it's Francis Chan in Letters to the Church. I'm looking at Ian because he's a reader. I'm sure he knows. Uh, but, but this book, Letters to the Church, he, he said this, if it, and I'm going to paraphrase in my own words. If you could wipe your memory and go to a des like an a abandoned, stranded island and read the Gospels, and that is your idea of church, and you come back to America, would you see it? Or would you have good coffee and a good greeting crew. I, I, I'm serious, and, and I'm, I'm saying this because I am gripped with this. I am seeing, I, 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 this, this um, young man started coming to youth, and he come to the rally, and he had no church experience, none. 
I had to beg him to come. And then he come, and after the rally, he comes up to me and hugs me. And I, I thought he was joking around, but then I feel his chest, and it's beating. And he's like, you people are crazy. He's like, every time one of you sing or speak, this warmth fills my body. And a tingling fills my body. And he said, thank you. I said, thanks for what? And he goes, I don't know. I just, he's like, I've been looking for this. Jesus is the answer. Come on. Jesus is the answer. And there is more. There is things that we can, we can walk in and a glory we can walk in and have on our shoulders. And there are signs, miracles, and wonders that can come from our hands. If you, you ready for this? I'm going I'm to make some scholars mad. <laughs> if you know nothing but Christ and him crucified. Jesus. That is our faith. It's not the wisdom of man, but the power of God. In other words... There can't be any mixture. There can't be any mixture. There, there, there can't be, I'm trying to live this and do this and balance my friends and Christianity. There can't be any mixture. Mixture is, is, is the same thing as being unclean. Turn with me, uh, if you will, to Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Um, are you okay if I share a few stories with you? Okay. I, uh, I love testimony. Sometimes, uh, you know, we, well, we know we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Uh, I, had a, I felt the Lord um, lead me to come up here a while ago and ask people if they need healing in their body to come. And uh, people come, and I prayed for so many, and I prayed... I heard the Lord say a few things, and then I added my prayer to it, you know, spiritual things, things I learned in, you know, experience and different things. And then I prayed for another, and I prayed for another, and I prayed for a guy, and I felt the Lord just say, say more. I said, more, Lord, more, Jesus, more, Jesus, more, Jesus. Anything else? <laughs> I didn't hear anything, so I just took my hand off of him and walked away. But Danny and I are getting ready to watch the Browns, which, by the way, if you don't believe God's working... Three and one, three and one, amen, amen, three and one. I need to get back to the Lord. I'm changing the topic. Um, <laughs> listen, he, we went to go get uh, beat up so we could watch the game, you know, and I could have something to chew on when I'm mad and frustrated at the way the Browns are playing. I get a text message, and, and, and this man says, hey, I wanted you to know that when you prayed for me, I had an injury to my body. And, and, and I couldn't feel the right side, and, and you prayed for me, and I walked back, and I pulled on my hand, and all my fingers visibly shifted, and the pain left my body. Now, now, yeah, come on. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not saying that to, to add that to my resume. It wasn't me. The point was, I prayed for this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and I added my prayer to it, but when I didn't change the topic and I said, Jesus, what do you want me to say? And he said, just say more, God. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm yielding to your voice. And I prayed he was healed. I didn't try to change the topic or add to. There's no need to add to. He is enough. And I said, more, God, more, Jesus, more, Lord. And he was healed. <laughs> A couple more stories. I, I tell the youth, I say, listen. I'm all for prayer in school and, and, you know, Ten Commandments at the courthouse. But, but we're not in that day anymore. Like, it can come back. But I said, you think your school will be saved if your teacher says a prayer with you? No. Here is where revival will hit your school. Why don't you show up filled with the Holy Spirit? Why don't you show up saying, I'm in the subject of math, but my topic is Jesus? <laughs> Come on. I don't care if the teacher prays with you. Why don't you pray for the teacher? Why don't you prophesy to the hallway? Why don't you speak in tongues in the classroom? Why don't you pray for healing for, for somebody that's injured or somebody that's suffering depression? I, I, I speak with guidance counselors, and they tell me, oh, we have so many battling with depression and anxiety, and we try to find good counselors and good medication. And I'm like, you can't medicate an, a, a demonic attack. I'm not saying you're a demon. I'm saying it's a demonic attack. 
You have to call it what it is. And the only solution is Jesus. When he shows up, they tremble. Come on, when a student shows up filled with the Holy Ghost, Marion Harding will be saved. And guess what? A preacher never stepped in there. <laughs> I feel like sometimes preachers can mess things up. But, but a spirit-filled student can change. Can, can, when they walk through the... I, I tell our teens this. I say, you should be pr in prayer that when you walk through the threshold of your school, the odds just change in favor of the kingdom. Because the Lord wants, he, he wants you to say, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, be, I, I'll, I'll let my flesh die violently. And I won't be afraid in front of my friends. I, I won't be afraid in front of the people I work with. I have one topic. Well, I got to be a good employee. It's impossible to be a good employee without Jesus. Trust me, I love Noah like a brother. But when I get up at 4.30 in the morning to go to work, I'm like, oh, Noah, why do we have to start so early? I, I, I wouldn't be a good employee, but it's Jesus in me that, that allows me to, to, to want to represent the kingdom well while I'm at work and well, and, and it's, it's, it's Jesus. I never, I try, I'm not perfect, but I try to never change the dial. And when I do, I'm quick. I don't care where I'm at to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. If we're at the store and, and somebody walks by that looks a little different than us and we, and we laugh, I say, Lord, forgive me. You wouldn't have laughed. I have to be quick to repent. I have to be quick to, I, I want you, Jesus. I want, I want, come Lord Jesus. I, I heard Michael Koulionos and he's, he's my favorite, uh, like a, like a spiritual, uh, like hero in the faith. I've listened to all his podcasts three times. <laughs> he said this, he said for his church, Jesus image, he said, you want to know our five-year plan? Come Lord Jesus, come. You want to know our 10-year plan? Come Lord Jesus, come. And people say, well, well, how do you get people to come? And man, you sing for like, your services are four hours. What, what's the, how's the secret to keep people? And he's like, it's Jesus. We sing until he tells us to move on. And then I preach until he tells me to shut up. And I don't speak on my own initiative. We, we, that's what happens when Jesus is the topic. My last story, my last testimony, it's one of my favorites. Um, when I first got saved and Knew the, call on my ministry, knew the call on my life was ministry. Um, I had four or five churches that called me, and they were smaller churches. And they said, we'd like to schedule you to preach. And um, so I, I did, and I, I went and preached at this church way in the holler, way in the sticks. I'm like, I thought you said it was in here. And I'm driving, and I'm like, oh, there it is. And th there's a, you know, a crowd of 20 people there. And there was one guy that greeted me and helped me get everything and show me where I was to go. And had a suit and tie, and, and he was the elder of the church. He said he'd been there since the church was built. He's known everybody that's come in and out of the doors. He is the man. And so anyways, I preached about tearing down idols. And I'm, I'm like been saved for like a year. <laughs> and I'm up and I'm like, oh, these people are going to hate me. And so I'm like, well, you know, I heard one of my favorite evangelists. He's a Nazarene evangelist. He's awesome. Uh, Danny and I went to listen to it. And uh, he, he, he was preaching really good. And he's like, not a sound. He's like, well, I was going to say something else, but I'll wait until you pay me, and then I'll leave. And then you can hate me when I'm gone, you know? But I was like, so I'm going to have this evangelist attitude where I'm like, well, if you hate me, I'm gone, so put up with me for an hour. Um, and, and, and so I preached my guts out. Everything, I, Lord, what are you saying? I would stop, and okay, this is what, and I'm preaching. I went off my notes, and I'm preaching, and I'm preaching, and give this altar call, and I'm sweating, man. I'm like, man, this whole church about to come to the altar. <laughs> Nobody come. <laughs> I'm like, man, I thought it was good. Like, and then all of a sudden, here comes this elder, make his way down the aisle, and he gets to the altar, and he just about falls, collapse. And I'm like, he's trying to get me out of here. Say, Lord, whatever he said, like, let these people be, have grace on him, you know? So I walk over, and I said, man, are you, like, how can I pray for you? You've been an elder in this church for so long. He said, I want to be born again. He said, the way you preached, the way you preached today he said, I've, I've been in this church my whole life. I've served. I've tithed. When nobody else was here, I was here. But I don't know that I'm saved. I don't know if I know that Jesus you talked about. I don't know if all my idols have fallen. And I would like for you to pray for me, and I'd like to be born again. I'm not saying that that, that was me. It was, I, I, I was fresh saved, the call to ministry. Well, I was a logger and proud of it. I didn't want to be around people. I would go in the woods and cut trees. Take him to the sawmill. I was, I was fine with that. But when I got saved, there became one topic. 
I remember one prophetic picture. I had these walls around me. You know, I was a drinker. I was a cusser. I was the, the this, the that. And when I, the, the evangelist was preaching, at, it was a missionary, I'm sorry. And all I remember is he read the scripture. Here I stand at the door of your heart and knock. And that minute I heard this. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And I wrestled with it. And finally I said, okay, Lord. And this, it's almost as if this wrecking ball knocked the walls down. And I was consumed with one topic from that point. And I preached, and I saw some pretty wild things in a, in a denomination that I was in. It was wild. My first sermon I ever preached was about the power of the Holy Spirit in a church where they didn't talk about that. And, and what happened is later on, I said, man, i got to start a church. Man, i gotta, I got to preach. I want to be like this pastor or that pastor. And so I started to change the dial, and I burn out. Even I was young, I burn out. I changed the topic and said, Jesus, I'm the topic you're what I'll preach about. He said, no. And, I, and that's when that moment happened that I fell from my faith. And I just, I didn't know if I was a preacher. I didn't know. And he said, you changed the topic. You changed the topic. If people aren't getting saved around you, maybe I'm not trying to beat you up. Maybe you just need to say, Jesus, are you the topic? Are, are you? And so Matthew chapter five, verse eight. You know, I could preach for a long time because I realized Danny took screenshots of my notes. So I'm on a time that I'm good. I still got like two hours here. Um, and so, um, yeah, she, she's got us going here. So um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. This is one of the greatest sermons, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus. It's the Beatitudes. I love it. And I tell the teens this all the time. Um, you know, I, I've considered starting a training center and schooling. Um, of discipleship. And I said, I want to take this. Corey told me in, uh, when he went to Valor Christian College, um, they had to memorize the Beatitudes. And I think that's great. I think that's great. And, and so I've, I've, I'm doing my best. I'm, I'm not quite there or else I wouldn't have the word open. But Matthew chapter 5, verse 8 says this, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. <laughs> blessed are the pure in heart. Guess what? Pure is free from mixture. Free from sin purified by fire, pruned. That's what you can translate pure from. Blessed are those who have let the fire of God purify them. Blessed are those who have let sin and flesh die. Blessed are those who have been pruned, for they shall see God. For they shall see God. There is no mixture. There is no arguing. There is no, I've heard people my whole life, when I started this Holy Spirit journey, I've heard so many people around me say, Blaine, it doesn't take all that. But prove what you're saying in the scriptures. Because what the scripture says are blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. And listen, this, this purity, let's look at uh, Psalms 24, verses 3 and 4. It describes this pure heart so well. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Clean hands, pure heart. Clean hands, pure heart. My hands are for him to use. My hands are the Lord's. My mind is the Lord's. My, my soul is the Lord's. My feet, is the, they're the Lord's. Everything about me. I, I, if not, I can't be in his holy place. And, and the holy place, yes, it's heaven, but what about the scriptures that says the day is coming that they will worship in spirit and in truth? Meaning the holy place, the veil was torn. You are the holy place. You are the meeting place. If you want to see God, there has to be this purity, this non-mixture. One topic, one Savior, Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Savior. Jesus the healer. Jesus. I, I love this. He says, I claim to know nothing but Jesus Christ. You know why he said Christ? Christ, when you break it down, it means anointed, right? And, and it's kind of this idea of the Levitical priest that would take the, bull, the bull's blood and take it to the altar. Jesus, when he ascended, or when, when he went and plundered the underworld and smacked the devil in the face and come back, he took his blood. He was the anointed priest that took the blood and put it on the mercy seat. So the, Levi, the Levitical priest was a, was a prophetic picture of Jesus. It was his blood. It's, he's the topic. It's my clean hands and pure heart. 
I want to meet you. I want to descend into you and be the holy place. You and Lord. Meet you and the Lord. Meeting him face to face. He who has not lifted up his soul to an idol. When you don't have Jesus as the topic, you have bowed to an idol. And, and I've been there. But, but we, we have to quit thinking, you know, well, I'm not that bad. Miss Joe's not that bad. This person's bad. What's the standard? Bad is bad. When it's not Jesus, it's, it's just not Jesus. Not just a little, well, my church is getting there. Like, is he the topic or isn't he? Is his blood what you want to be covered in or isn't it? Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. There is more. His name is Jesus. There is more, and his name is Jesus. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. You notice he said that I may press on. There is a thing as going deeper in the presence. There is a thing as wanting more. There is a thing. You don't graduate from Jesus to Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it's better that I leave so I can send you the Spirit. And the Spirit comes, and he gives you life, and then if you press on, he clothes you with power. But the Holy Spirit always points back to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will lead you to say, yes, I have life in the Spirit I am clothed in power, but all I do is to edify Christ. I didn't go deeper. I, I, I'm sorry, I went deeper, but in that, I fell more in love with Jesus. I, I, I fall head over heels in love when I'm in the Gospels. Man, when I read Matthew and think I have it figured out, I read it again, and I'm like, how did I miss all of that? Just when I thought, I, 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 I get, I'm growing in maturity, but I'm becoming more childlike. I use my cousin Ashley and Kyle for an example. Kyle, Kyle is like my definition of ultimate dad. And um, I, I love it that when Kyle walks into the room, the kids go running and they're like, dad. And they'll do their little thing and he'll pick them up and all of that. And I'm like, I want to be like that with Jesus. But see, see, people have twisted this idea of love. And Danny and I were getting married and, and so many people said, oh, that's just the newlywed. It'll wear off. I'm like, no, I don't accept that. I don't accept that. I want to be just as in love with her in 10 years as I am right now. And who did I get that from? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I want to love you, Jesus. I don't give my heart to Christ. And when I go to the gates of judgment, say, but yeah, but Jesus, I was in love with you 30 years ago. He's not into a marriage that you just stayed together. He wants intimacy. He wants you to be purified. He wants purity. He wants innocence. He wants holiness and righteousness. And, and, and I could preach this thing for months, but I'm trying to just give you topics for you to chew on when you go home, that, that all of that comes when there's no mixture. It's just Jesus. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. I would like to think that we see so little of manifestation of the Spirit because we haven't had a full revelation of Jesus. We haven't, we haven't, uh, I'm trying to find this scripture that I put down. Hmm. There's a scripture, I think it's Acts chapter 4, verse 20, if my memory's working, and it says, How can we not speak about the things we've seen and heard? When there's no mixture, it says, You shall see God, and when you see Him, you can't stop talking about him. I said, Jesus, how am I, like, uh, how, how am I going to preach about you every Wednesday? Like, like how? And, and he said, listen, you won't be able to shut up about me if you're with me. <laughs> He's like, listen, I will be everything you talk about. And, 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 and when, when there's no mixture, I, I had a friend I'm having speak in the youth, and he said, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your ways when you get in the word? What, what do you do? And I'm like, not look for something to preach on. No. You can do that. You, you, can, you can find something, but there will be no weight to it. There, there will be no weight. There will be no demonstration. See, Jesus ministered this way. 
He taught, he preached, and he healed. In other words, when the word was released, remember he said, I do nothing on my own initiative. There's always a demonstration. Always a demonstration. Always a move of the Spirit. You may not see it, but there's always a move of the Spirit when he is the topic. And so, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 through 3. 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 through 3 says, Beloved, now we are children of God. Abigail, this verse made me think of you because you always say this in communion. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when, when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Listen to this. This is what she always talks about. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as the Lord is pure. This, he purifies himself. That's interesting. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, the promises of God, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16 and 17 says something like this. Wash yourself. Make yourself clean. What does that mean? That, that means that it's an action word. It's, it's a verb. My English teacher would be proud. It's a verb. It's a verb. It means I have to do something. Lazy people are, won't be good Christians. You have to do something. And, and he's not saying jump in a spiritual bathtub. He's saying invite me into your life. When I'm the topic, I'll wash you with the water you know not of. I'll cover you in an oil that you can't put words on. I will wash away the filthiness when I'm the topic, when I'm the, the, when I'm the answer to the issue, when I'm fill in the blank, when Jesus is all, I love how Roe says it. He's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. You can have the greatest church and it doesn't please the Lord. I told the teens, I want you to serve, but don't serve to impress us. Because that, that's not what TGP nor Blaine and Daniela want. We don't want you to plug in. We want you to be an overflow and say, I can't leave this place. Man, you guys love Jesus. I love Jesus. I just want to be here. That, that's what, that's, that's what, when I, Jesus, it's nothing, it's, it's nothing we can physically, uh, well, we can do it, but it's not like something we have to, we have to check off a religious list so we can become members. It's spiritually, Jesus, be the topic. I'm, I'm struggling with lust. Will, will you wash it away? Because you can quit looking at porn, but that's not really the issue. See, Jesus didn't say, don't eat from the tree of porn. Did he? He didn't say, don't eat from the tree of alcoholism. Don't eat from the tree where you know things that aren't me. So, so cleansing yourself is Jesus become the topic so that this thing can leave me. This thing being sin. Because there's sin in me and it's manifesting in things like alcohol, like pornography, like gossip, like these things. Jesus, send the waters from heaven. Revelation says his voice sounds of many rushing waters. Let your voice speak over me because that water will cleanse me and purify me. God is pure. We should be pure. He is holy. We should be holy. That is not religious. That is not whatever. That is the gospel. Amen. Call it religious. I don't care. I tell the teens when I preached at our, at our um, rally, and I went in, I talked about holiness. And I talked about Moses taking the sandals off. He said, don't come any closer because this is holy ground. And I said, it's time. I believe that we have a generation of people that have looked at the fire but haven't taken their sandals off. This is the gospel. It's not religious. It's Jesus. We have to be cleansed and purified. No mixture. My friend Andrew said, listen, I told him what I preached on. He said, oh, that's so good. He goes, you also think he took the sandals off because there can be, uh, you know, Moses come from the ground and he was, he was stepping on the holy ground and there couldn't be anything man-made in between. Man, we have to leave mixture behind. If we are going to see a move of God in these days, God's bigger than COVID. And people say they know that, but man, he's got to become the topic. That's the only way. And there will be a demonstration. Hmm. 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I told this to our teens, and Danny made a pretty cool post out of it. I was on Facebook, you know, had a post about me, and it said, my quote from when I ministered to them, it said, every time you have an encounter with God, something about you should look different. Every time you have an encounter with God, something about you should be different. You can't walk into holiness and leave the same way. You can't be face to face. I love how Rob McCorkle says it. Man, I want to go in so far over my head. My snorkel is the mouth of God. I preached that one time and a teen's lips caught fire. That's true. She said, man, my lips were burning. I said, because he wants to be mouth to mouth with you. And when you do that, if, you, if, if your mouth, you can't have a double-sided mouth. Every time you're with him, something has to change. So if you gossip, I dare you to go in the presence and want him. Because he will take that thing away from you. He will cleanse you. He will wash you. We shall see God. We shall behold the Lamb. The greatest revival scripture of all time to me is John the Baptist when Jesus walks. And I, I heard Chad Seabright, a great evangelist, say, <laughs> there were so many things going on at the Jordan River, and here comes Jesus and all the distractions all of a sudden stopped to John. And he said, behold the Lamb of God. He saw, he was pure in heart. He had one topic. He had one subject, and he saw the Lamb. And when you see him, things change in your life. Things shift in your life. And you begin to carry him in such a way. Then Miss Joe has, I told Miss Joe one time, I said, uh, we, we, were, we were, it was, man, it was like a year ago. And, and we were at the altar and I said, Miss Joe, there's something different about your eyes when you look into them. You can tell the people that have been with the Lord. You know, I studied revival history and culture and, and, and evangelists like Catherine Coleman and Benny Hinn and, and these guys. And it's not because I want to be like them. It's because I want, those, I want those spiritual moms and dads in the church that when you look at them, you're like, there's something different about them. You know, I, I want somebody to be, have that fire, that twinkle in their eye that I'm like, you've been with the Lord. You know my sin too. I heard a pastor say this. He's like, I think it's time that we get an old spirit-led mother in the church to just politely tell us off. Now, I'm not encouraging that because if God doesn't tell you to do that, it's not good. But, but man, we, we've got to get back in this purity, this purity. And, and I've told my teens, I've said, listen, purity doesn't just mean you haven't had sex. It means that you don't want to. It means that Jesus is the answer. Because if, if you just want to say, like, pure, I can't have sex, it, you're, you're not, like, worshiping God in that. You're not seeing him manifest. But, but when somebody says, man, what's different about you? you, you nobody else held out till marriage. And you're like, I'm in love with the Lord. Man, I, I, my heart is after him. And, 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 and when, when that happens, you see him and then people see him on you. Let's see. I have a few more minutes. Can I use them? Okay. Purity looks like something. Purity. It said you shall see God. Purity looks like something. You know, I, I told you I thought about offering classes and training and discipleship, and I was seeking the Lord on different topics, and I said, Lord, what, what about the supernatural? What, what about signs, miracles, and wonders? And he took me to Genesis chapter 2, um, which I wonder, I, it's almost like I had a pastor that said that. I don't know. It's a, a ringing, you know. It's like I can hear him now. I can see the beads of sweat on him right now. I hope he's sweating like crazy right now, just preaching the daylights out. I hope that church gets wrecked. I hope Megan calls Rowan's like, where are you at? It's one o'clock. And he's like, I'm still praying for people. I'm, I'm longing for that. Purity looks like Genesis chapter 2, 24 and 25. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, and the, ma the naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Shame is the core of every sin. They were not ashamed. They were in a marriage covenant that two shall become one. The man left what he knew, and he became one with his wife. Listen, we have to reach this place of this purity, this pure love. 
As Abigail says in communion, seeing the Lord for who he is. He is Savior. He is bride. He is the bridegroom. He is Father. He is Lord. He is holy all in one. He's the, I've heard it said like this. He's the only one that I can spend hours with and leave with a tear in my eye. Both a tear of joy and a tear because I already miss him. This pure longing for the Lord. No shame. No, 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 uh, this like I'm not good enough. Or God, do you not, do you not know my past? Do you not know who I am or what I've done? Or I'm, I'm not good enough. Trust me. I said, God, you want me to preach? I know I'm a windbag and I can talk. But before I got saved, I didn't really talk. I didn't do this stuff. But when I come in front of him and said, no, you're Lord. And my heart's after you. I'll do whatever you want me to. I really just want to be at your feet, Jesus. I just want to lay here with you. I just want to be with you, Lord. There was no shame. It wasn't, well, God, I, this or that. There was just no excuses. There was no, you don't know what I've done. It's just, I stepped into this. I said, Lord, I don't want to leave. Then this pure intimacy of the two shall become one. And you're not ashamed. You're like, I was created for this. I was created for this intimacy. I have finally found purpose. Then we look at Genesis chapter 2, verses 5. It says, Before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any, any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. Rain, when you translate this, is anything that comes from heaven abundantly. Anything that can come from heaven abundantly. Until, till means to work, to serve, to have a husband, and it mainly means this when you translate it, a worshiper. Listen, the pure in heart will see God. They will see God, and they will worship him, and they will live in this place of worship, and they will never want to leave this place, and those people are the tillers. Those people are the ones that go out, and, and listen, God has plenty of rain in this hour, but he's searching for the worshipers. He's searching for the tillers. He's searching for the pure in heart. He said, I want to show myself, but will somebody leave the mixtures, leave the topic, leave the language, leave your shame, and seek me and worship me because not only will you see me there's a rain available for you and everyone around you there's a rain available for your family and not just what you think it's abundant there is a rain available there is only there's a thing that can only come from heaven available and it's for those that are pure in heart a pure thing he is the topic so those are when we close i'm gonna have have you up and i want to pray with you those are the two things first one is I want to pray for those that, that want that pureness, that want that mixture to leave. That say, I've, I've been mixed up and I've been confused and I need to be purified because I need to see God. Others need to see God on me. I, I need to see God. The second one is, there's a rain available and I want more. I, I want, I, I, Lord, I, I want to worship you and I want, to, I want to be the servant. I want to be, you know, the harvest is here, but, but we need the workers. And, and Lord, I, I, I'm laying all topics aside, not Lord. Yeah, I'm a harvester and I have this great idea for a ministry. Listen, I have an idea for a ministry too. I do. God said, I'll give it to you when you let it die. And I'm the topic. There's a second one. The third one is this. Matthew chapter seven, verse two, in the end of the scripture says, and with the measure you used, it'll be measured back to you. Matthew 25, verse 29. And I, this is really something I could preach heavy, but I just want to give you this. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. So the third one is it, 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 the third thing, if this is you. It's time to be activated. The measure you use, it'll be, it'll be measured back to you. It's time some of us are activated. God has given you something, and it's time to walk in that. It's time. It is time. We are in the hour of harvest, and it's time. It is time. He has given you something, and are you going to use it? The measure you use it, not on, your term, not on your terms, on God's terms. He's the topic. He's the one who give it. He is the instruction manual. 
He's the one to tell you how to use it. And whoever has will be given more. There is more, and his name is Jesus. So again, if you need this, this mixture to leave your life and you want this pureness so you can see God, that's for you. The second one, if you say, God, I, this rain that you're talking about, I, I want to I just have access to that. I want to walk in that. I want to be the worshiper. I want to be the, the harvester that you use, Lord. Or Matthew chapter 7, if you say, I need to be activated because God has given me something and I've let it go dormant and I want to walk in that. If any of those are you, I'm going to ask you to come up. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Look at the Lord. Look at the Lord. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. Maybe... Maybe you say, hey, I've been to church my whole life and I just want to be born again. Maybe that testimony was for you. There's no shame in that. Come. Now's the moment. Now's the hour. Give it to Jesus.
you.